What's up, YouTube? It's me again, back, as you can see. Uh, it's not a video of me, it's a video of my pedal board. I, I typically get a few questions from guitar players specifically on kind of how I run things and um, really what I do um, to achieve the tones that I do. So let's go through it. So the first thing in the chain is going to be my Walrus, or Walrus Audio Deep Six. This is a compressor, of course. Um, typically I leave everything at noon. Um, but sometimes they move around and it sounds pretty good wherever it is. The blend knob kind of changes fairly often. Next up is my JHS Morning Glory. Um, this is one of my always on overdrives. Typically I never turn it off unless I'm doing any kind of big volume swells or anything like that that just really needs a clean signal. Um, so it's generally always left on, but sometimes it is turned off. And that's the same with the compressor. I always leave that on. Next, we have the JHS Ruby Red. This is my second and third stage overdrive, but uh, they're not on at the same time ever because you'll get some crazy fuzz tones if you boost into the Super Bolt, which is what these two are. It's a boost and a Super Bolt. Um, generally, this is how I run things. Uh, volume pretty low, tone pretty high and drive. Um, almost straight up the middle, same with the boost straight up the middle. Um, but generally, I use the boost um, to just achieve a little bit more saturation and a little bit more volume. And the Super Bolt, I use for just a really saturated lead tone, um, but really nice and crisp on the high end. Next up is the Kaisman Pedals Velvet Drive. I kind of like this pedal um, just to kind of get some really high crunchy gain for some really big rhythm diamonds and other things like that. Um, there's not much to say about it. It's really high gain and it has it, um, it's really chunky. Uh, so I don't typically go for it um, on all occasions, but when I do, I'm, I'm not really disappointed. Next up, we have the Walrus Audio Julia. Uh, this is one of their special arts, um, the Callisto series. It's got a, uh, presumably Julia is there on the front, as you can see, um, Julia is there. Ju Julia, it's Julia. Anyways, uh, I typically run this just for vibrato. I'll, I'll tell you just a little bit more about that later, but generally I only use it for vibrato purely because I really love the sound of it. And the next pedal that we have in the chain is the Ernie Ball VP Junior. Uh, this is pretty standard. A lot of people use this for the you know kind of music that I play. A lot of people have had issues with this pedal with the string breaking or just gen it generally being unreliable on the the pots and other things like that, but I've never really experienced any kind of um, issue there. Occasionally I do get some scratchiness, but that can be resolved by just tightening the nuts at the top of the input and output jacks. Next up we have the Micro Pog, and don't really use it that much. I wish I could use it more, but I just have not really found many practical applications for it in a live environment. Sometimes I can find some really cool applications in the studio, such as like having a really high mix reverb and doing some cool like swellies stuff and other kind of ambient things like that. But generally for live, sometimes I'll throw on an octave above just to emphasize a lead line. But other than that, it doesn't have much utility. Next up, we have a really janky RV5. Um, this was the first pedal that I ever bought and I do not regret it, but it is only in mono and you have to go input A and output B, so it's very strange. Um, but it does pass signal. I typically only use it for a slight reverb, although sometimes I do dime it out just for the modulate setting on this particular reverb. I love it. Next up in the signal chain, we have the Deadbeat Sound Wet Dreams Chorus. This was a complete impulse buy. I saw it on Facebook and it was, you know, advertised for $32 or something, half off. And I looked it up, listened to a couple videos and ordered it within the hour. Um, so that was a very big impulse buy, but I bought it and it sounds really good. Um, I wasn't really happy with how the chorus sounded on the Julia. I felt that I needed something a little bit more vintage uh, sounding, maybe like a C, a Boss C2 or something of that nature. But this fit the profile for that sound really well. And so I'm very pleased with the purchase. I encourage you to check out Deadbeat Sound as well. They have some really cool uh, reverbs and uh, delays and other things like that. Next up, we have the Boss DD20. And as you can see, it's sitting next to its main rival, the Strymon Timeline. And a lot of people say, well, why, Ross, do you have a Timeline next to a DD20? Why don't you just have one or the other? And I tell them it's because I'm an egotistical maniac who has to have more than one delay pedal to cover up the lack of talent. 
Just kidding, that's not what I say. I used to have the DD20 a long time ago, but then I sold it to get the timeline, but then I was finding that I couldn't achieve the same kind of analog delay sounds that I was getting from this uh, digital delay pedal, interestingly enough. And so I purchased it again just to have that analog uh, sound. So now the way that I run them two together is this runs dotted eight most of the time, and this runs quarter note delay, and I've had no problems with it um, ever since I bought it again. We go stereo out of the DD20 into the Strymon timeline. This one is pretty self-explanatory. It's just the best delay pedal in its class. I love it because I can program it and I'm a massive nerd. Um, I love being able to switch through different presets just on a quick tap. So, you know, I have all my delays programmed and everything like that down to the BPM of the song that we're doing, which is really helpful if you're running something like Ableton where you have clicks and everything like that, where you can just have your delay synced up um, right up with the click. And the same goes for this DD20 is, is I'll program them both in tandem and I'll have some really cool um, galloping delay and, and some really cool just, just effects with both of them on at the same time. Last but not least for pedals, we have the Strymon Big Sky, which again, both of these are, are, are very highly controversial pedals to own sometimes because people say, well, there's other things that are cheaper that can do the same thing for this, you know, for a much cheaper price. And to those people I say, well, it is the best. And so that's why I bought it. I also use the plate settings, the hall setting. And I think also I have, yeah, I have some cloud settings here as well. And I have a, a spring reverb that I haven't really set up that much, but it's just the best. Um, it, does, it does exactly what I need it to do. Again, I can program it on my computer with all of the reverb machines that I need. I can download some from online. I can do anything with that, you know, through MIDI and everything like that. Super durable pedals. I really love both of my Strymon pedals. Um, I've had no complaints with them at all. The software works great. And if you notice, I'm using some barefoot buttons for the Big Sky. Um, and the reason is, is because it's above these Strymon Timeline knobs. And, uh, you know, I'm really nervous about hitting these knobs whenever I'm banking up and down or switching through different presets on the Big Sky. So I purchased these so that whenever I'm looking to change a preset on the Big Sky, I don't change any of the knobs on the timeline. Here is the Polytune 2. Uh, it's the mini version, super small, no complaints. Um, tunes my guitar. Another controversial decision that I have made is I have an unpowered Ernie Ball DP Jr. and I'm using the tuner out into the Polytune 2 and I've experienced no tone loss. Another kind of, I guess, no-no to do in the community, but I do it and it doesn't sound bad. I also have these. This is my picks. These are my picks too. I guess it's pretty self-explanatory. You may also be wondering, how is this powered? I'm gonna flip this around very carefully. Here's the underneath. So we've got a Strymon Ohi that's Velcroed to the very bottom of this, along with uh, a Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus, all mounted, and I've got some twist ties just holding some of the cables down. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all my pedals. Um, let's move on to the guitars. This is my most recent purchase. It is a Reverend Jetstream 390. Um, it's a very beautiful guitar, um, as you can see. Um, I love the finish, and I love the pickguard. I love everything about um, the way that it sounds and the way that it looks. What I was looking for in my next guitar was the, the chiminess of a single coil, but the power of a humbucker, and I really found that with the P90s. Um, I really love the fact that there's three of them. That gives me the option to do that kind of quote unquote quacky sound on positions two and four of the pickups, which is something that I was really looking for in my next guitar. Um, it's also something that I've never really had in a guitar, so it's really cool um, to have. Also something to note is that the bass roll off knob is amazing. Um, I don't really know what I did without it. Next up we have my Tele, which as you can see is very red. Um, it is a uh, American Vintage reissue um, of the 72 Thin Line uh, Tele with the um, double uh, wide range humbuckers, um, which by the way, I absolutely love. It has the wide range uh, pickups on it, um, which by the way, I absolutely love. Um, the headstock feels amazing, so does the neck. Um, really no complaints with this guitar. 
Um, I'm just finding new ways to use it, new ways to make it sound good um, pretty much every time I play it. So there's really generally no complaints on this guitar. And yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for all of my gear. Oh, and all of the cables were made by one of my buddies, Robert Brzezinski, over at 8-Track Audio. This has pretty much been just a whole bunch of time accruing a whole bunch of gear and uh, just me trying to figure out how to use it. So um, if you're looking forward to any particular pedal um, for me to review um, that's on my pedal board, just let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to subscribe and like. That would help me out um, tremendously. Thank you so much for watching. Catch you later.